Hello there, my friends. How are you guys doing? Welcome to the Legacy Cast. My name is Tim Lee, and today I want to grumble a little bit. And maybe you might want to grumble along with me, and if that's the case, then let's grumble along together. This is an interesting topic that continues to come back to my mind again and again and again. And I am so frustrated by it. And I do also feel that it is part of the cause and reason why content is getting missed. Because we as creators can create until we're blue in the face. We can make as many videos as humanly possible. We can do so many different things that we think will be original and unique. But trends seem to take a much higher role when it comes to the algorithm. So today, I want to focus in on one topic specifically, and that's the idea of reaction videos. Now, I'm going to uh, walk into the courtroom, place down my uh, information on the table, and say, Judge, here is what I have to present. And so I'm going to present to you today my argument against reactions. Now, if you follow any of my YouTube channels, you know that I actually do and did quite a few reaction videos, specifically in the world of music, suggested by a good friend of the Legacy Studio Network, Tony Allen. We began this beautiful journey of checking out some truly incredible music. Uh, I mean, we listened to the B-52s, we listened to... Asia, which was such a beautiful, twisting, mind-numbing, delicious amount of sound, uh, because Tony Allen actually provided and purchased this beautiful, ultra-high-definition record uh, for me for my collection, which is very minimal, but this thing is so beautiful and these records are so pristine and putting them on my record player and playing them and playing them in reaction for you guys on my YouTube channel. It was magical. It was a magical experience. I really, really, really enjoyed that. Really enjoyed sharing that. So why would I be walking into the courtroom and saying that reaction videos oppose the benefit of us as viewers and the internet in general. Well, I would suggest that like all good things, good things can be abused. And I feel that right now, content, the focus on content, it's far more focused on creating as much content as possible versus creating as good content as possible. And I will agree, if you follow any of my work, that I am a quick producer. I come from radio. I come from training from a dad who worked in television and radio broadcasting. I've learned to flip content very fast. And I love making content that can be created quickly. I really do love that. But there is a problem that we are facing, and that is when that content is being made very superficially without purpose. And then it begins disturbing the waters of what is really supposed to be accomplished with a reaction. So let's talk a little bit about what, first off, what a reaction video is. If you've never seen one, I apparently have the hiccups, and that's nothing new about me when I create content. I always seem to get the hiccups when I talk too much, which should be a sign, but I don't do that. I don't actually use that. It's a bad omen to shut up and stop now, and I still continue on. So we're going to continue on. But here's what a reaction video is. A reaction video is someone sitting down watching someone else's content and reacting to said content. Now, I believe that there's two sides of the spectrum of a reaction video or reaction content in general. You have the abusers and then you have the creators. Now, let me explain 
what a really good reaction is, what a really good reaction video is. And I don't know the names of these YouTubers off the top of my head, but I will at least tell you what their content is like, what makes it positive, and then we'll share the negatives. One channel that I really, really enjoy is a musician who simply sits in front of his piano and he has a conversation with his viewership and he goes, Sonic the Hedgehog's theme song is way better than you think and here's why. And so he will react to the Sonic the Hedgehog song, playing it on the piano, explaining what makes it so intricate, giving content to the content and making the original content richer. That is a beautiful reaction video. In the world of politics right now, reaction videos are at their peak. Politics and reactions go hand in hand, and it makes perfect sense because the internet, all of us in general, we feed off of negativity online. Now, now I, 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 you, you might be going, I don't feed off negativity. Well, listen to what I'm saying. If there's a video that said, she had a baby, here's the reveal. Or you see a video that says, um, the drug test came out. Is this her, is this his son or daughter? Which video are you more likely to click on? Because of the negativity, uh, the desire to see conflict being triggered by conflict, most people go in the direction of the conflict. Because it's more interesting. It's more catching to the eyes. And so the problem is, in these political things, if you're just a person sitting there playing someone else's video, even even legacy media, even if you're using legacy media's video and you're simply watching that and playing it on your channel, that's not a reaction, that is theft. In my very bold opinion, that is not a reaction, that is theft. And that is the problem with 90% of reaction videos today because there are so many people who are getting quick views and quick subscribers, and I will prove my point because I did it, um, hopefully better than others did, but let me, I'll, I'll get to that point here in a minute, where they are simply showing their face on a video that they're watching and re-uploading that to the internet. And they're getting thousands upon thousands upon thousands of views. Now, that might be might not be monetizable, per se, because the content hopefully is connected to the original creator, and they would be getting their monetization money. But it is building popularity for the channel that is doing this very fake theft reaction. And I've seen so much of that on the internet recently that I'm honestly getting sick of it. I'm honestly getting sick of it. So... If you've watched any of my music reactions, um, let me tell you my story. And we're going to rewind back a bit. Once again, we're going back to uh, Tony Allen uh, giving the suggestion to do reactions to movies and reactions to songs. Uh, because of my background in music as a hobbyist producer, I felt like it would be a lot of fun to react to music and give my 10 cents uh, being a music pastor um, in my old church for many years uh, from my production stuff that I do on a daily basis. I feel like I have a little bit of information that I can give to someone who doesn't know anything about music. Why this note it sounds sweeter than another note or what other, whatever other reasons I have for listening to this music. And so as I began 
creating my reactions to songs, and we were starting with classics. We were starting with classics. We were starting with Deep Purple. We were starting with B-52's Rock Lobster. We were starting with Asia um, and and Steely Dan uh, to the Bee Gees to, you, you know what I'm talking about, to the Beatles, to, to all of those. And I started doing reactions to all this stuff, focusing my intent of not just reacting to it as a first time or hearing it, but trying to find notes to make that experience even more sweet. To to give the viewer extra information that they would appreciate. I think that makes sense. I think that makes perfect sense. And I've seen so many great reaction videos, even in the political realm, whether you're conservative, Democrat, Republican, whatever the case may be, right, left, you know, uh, whatever you believe in, someone having an opinion and expressing their opinion is um, is very eye-opening. I, I really like it because it, it shows humanity in a way. And um, this will tell you a little bit about how I lean politically per se, but there's a, a gentleman named Steven Crowder, and he's got a really great team. Uh, they have the Mug Club over on Rumble, and uh, they have a morning show most mornings that you can see for free or you can pay for their service. But these guys are hilarious. They're a bit foul. Um, but one thing that I really, really love that they do is whenever there's a political um, – um, I'm, I'm trying to remember the word – debate uh, – Kamala versus Trump, uh, just last night or the night before last, two nights ago, uh, it was J.D. Vance versus Tim Waltz. Um, what they do is they react to the debate live in the moment. So they are live streaming themselves, reacting to the debate as it is happening. Now, if you're just reacting to it, giving your 10 cents, I still think that's better than just sitting there watching it deadpan with nothing to say, no reaction really, and you're simply utilizing that content for your own gains with no benefit to the viewer whatsoever. But what I really like about what Steven Crowder and his team do is they fact check everything. So as they're listening and you're hearing these political people give their opinions left, right, whatever it is. Um, and of course, Stephen Crowder and his team are very right-leaning. They respond in kind with, first off, their thoughts and opinions, which are usually hilarious because a lot of them are kind of comedians in their own right. Um, but then in the second part of that, a lot of them are also going, okay, uh, we just looked up this one fact and survey says blah, 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 blah. I think that that is a very enriching experience. And yes, I've watched a debate without having those reactions. And no, it's not nearly as fun and entertaining as watching someone who's very ed educated and entertained, entertainment-minded to watch that content and respond with their 10 cents. So I really love those kinds of reactions. When you can use your experience and your knowledge to make the content better for someone else, that's a win. But what is happening in this day and age is people are getting money, people are getting attention, people are getting... They're getting rewarded for really stupid junk. They are just simply taking someone else's video, sticking their face on it. I've seen people take their video of themselves and simply make a quick little video of them looping. And, and if you don't know what that means, basically, imagine me looking at the camera and then... I go and I stop the camera, and I just take that five seconds, and I loop it over and over and over and over and over and over, and then I put that over top the video, and now I am reacting, per se, because my face is obviously on the video, so it's a reaction video, but really what it's doing is simply utilizing the other content, and that has nothing to do with it.
Now let's go into a little bit more of the legalese behind this because a lot of people are saying, well, reaction videos are legal. Yes, but that's only because of something called the Fair Use Act. Okay, the Fair Use Act, I've done lots of research on this. When I decided I was going to try and do reaction videos, I was deeply concerned about what that meant for monetization rights. Um, if you're a business, if you're a business-minded person, if you're trying to make money off of your content, like I am, then I want to know what is legal and not legal for someone moving forward. Especially me, because I don't want these guys coming out after me going, hey, guess what? You're going to have to remove all your content. Here's a cease and desist. And by the way, <laughs> here's a summons. Um, so in my research, yes, absolutely, absolutely. A reaction is a form of teaching content. You can use other people's content legally without telling them or requesting the use of their content. You have permission to use it to teach, to give your reaction, to make positive or negative comments, however you see fit. That is completely legal, but you're not supposed to monetize it. That is the part that most people are missing. You're not supposed to monetize it. It's supposed to be used for educational purposes only. The Fair Use Act was created for schools, colleges, teaching sources, resources. It was made to go grab historical video documents and put them in your video doing a documentary on history. It's what made it legal for you to do that. Instead of having to go to some museum somewhere and request or pay or whatever, you're wel welcome to use that piece of history in your content. You can't sell the content. It can only be used for educational purposes. You see what the problem is here, though? Everyone has started creating reactions because they're easy. Now, where have I found the success myself? Glad you asked. So when I started doing these reactions, it was simply because a couple of people said it was a good idea on my channel. Really good people that I deeply appreciate. The Tony Allens, the Sean Hammonds, all these amazing folks. And when they make suggestions on what I should do, I give it a shot. And so when Tony says, hey, you should try music reactions and, and movie reactions, which I didn't do. Um, I began and I found an instant growth in my YouTube channel. I mean instant. My videos that were getting 30, 50, 70, 100 views were getting 1,000, 2,000, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, 100,000 views like that because... And here's the very interesting thing about what this reaction content is actually doing, especially in the world of music. There are people that just go ape over a band to such an extent that they will follow it, and I do mean the word religiously, where they will wake up each morning, go to their computer or their cell phone, go to the search engine within YouTube and say, within the last 24 hours, show me all of the videos on my favorite band that have released in the last 24 hours. So if you are a reactor and you upload a video of you reacting to this new song that just released and all of these religious fanatics for this band... Now, I'm not calling everyone a religious fanatic for the band, but I'm telling you, some of these people, let's let's just give you this. Um, uh, I did reactions for a band called Baby Metal. It's a Asian, all-female, three band members that, uh, that one sings, two dance, and they have a whole cast band behind them. And they're a metal singing group, but it's Asian young ladies, and so it's very interesting and very unique. Their followership is so religiously invested that they have started saying, hashtag not a cult. Hashtag not a cult. But when you when you talk talk to these people, when you meet these people people online and when you see the comments if you leave one piece of negative comment on their favorite band 
they will rip you to shreds. I mean, the negative comments that I get on some of my reaction videos are so disgustingly vehement against me. Um, you can go and see, you can go and check out my Legacy Studio channel, uh, or especially right now my Legacy Music Studio channel, uh, where I'm beginning to release music reactions on the new channel. Uh, to literally pull people in. But let's get back to the point. Um, I found that anytime I released a baby metal video, it got swarmed. And I do mean swarmed by an army of people that were so hardcore in love with this band. Just to see a new reaction video came out, that came out, they immediately grabbed that. They'd go to their Discord. They'd share it on their baby metal Discord so that all the f fans who were freaking out would go there and find it and watch it. And I would watch my videos skyrocket and explode so easily. And I found that not only with bands like Baby Metal um, and um, Band Made um, and, and other, but I, I found them from the classics. I found them from uh, the Beatles. I found them from Steely Dan. I found them from every. It is a niche that has become so incredibly popular same with movie reactions because if you're such a hardcore fan that you're doing searches every 24 hours and as soon as you find one video you jump you grab the share link and you go to your friends in the discord and you say there is a new reaction to our favorite people go and see and it, it was intense now let me let me make one thing very clear. If you think I just gave you the keys to the kingdom, I kind of did. If you want to grow your viewership and your subscriptions by a lot very, very quickly, then do music reactions. I'm not kidding. Now, a lot of your music will get blocked because you're using someone else's content, but you will get viewership very quickly, and subscriptions very quickly. You're welcome. But here's what's going to come back in return that's just going to make you feel like it was all useless. Are you ready for this? When everyone swarms into your YouTube channel, and they're all leaving comments, and you're going, oh my goodness, this is amazing. I'm getting views. I'm getting subscriptions. Look at all these crazy comments I need to respond back to. I got a hundred comments in one day. I can't keep up with them all. This is amazing. This is amazing. This is amazing. Please understand that those people were never there for you or your content. They were there for their band. And even though your video might be marked a reaction video, if you leave your reaction, they actually get angry at you for it. Now, yes, there's some proper procedures, if you will. For me personally, if I heard something in that moment in the song that I was really enjoying in my first time reaction, I would pause the video and make mention of that and then unpause and continue. The world of people who are such fans of these bands absolutely hate that you're reacting and interrupting the performance from their favorite band. I am not kidding. And they are harsh. They are mean. So mean. Because they're not there for you. They're there just gobsmacked about their amazing band that, that they are religiously focused on has nothing to do with you. And you know what happens even though I took my channel from 6,000 subscribers to 10,000 subscribers in a matter of months creating reaction videos to bands? You know what actually happens when you do that? So many negative comments against you and so many positive comments towards them. You're just sitting there feeling completely unloved, unappreciated, and even though you would be considered somewhat viral and somewhat of a success in other people's eyes, you're sitting there hating what you're doing. Take that from the guy who did it. 
and who's technically still doing it, but doing it differently now that I have experienced that very shallow success. Reaction videos need to have purpose. Like every good thing, every good thing can be taken and manipulated and used improperly and poorly. And that is exactly what is happening in our world right now in the internet in general. There's a lot of beauty, and, and, and I'll talk about this in another podcast in the future. AI is a really impressive thing, a beautiful and impressive thing. But here's the problem that I really detest. And I'm going to focus in on one key thing so I don't spoil talking about this and something in the future. But AI voiceovers, they sound fake, they feel fake, they feel lifeless. And if it's someone from overseas who's making it, like all those Temu ads that are absolutely terrible, it just, it is so inhumane for the ability to do something quickly. That means if I allowed AI to do everything that I do, then I wouldn't be learning how to do the things I do now. Figuring out how to make something work instead of doing it the easy way is a beautiful way to learn very quickly to improve your life in your future. I think AI is fascinating and very exciting. I think it's fun to watch. I think it's fun to use. I love using ChatGPT. I think it's fantastic. As an artist, I detest it. As a photographer, I detest it. As a musician, I detest it. But as a content creator, I, I appreciate what its capabilities are. When it can look through my videos and create all my time codes, it can go and transcribe everything in a video. There's definitely some positives in the video creation world for AI. But I'll tell you what, it's used so poorly in today's ads the ads feel so incredibly fake when you're just trying to play an app on your phone. Not to mention what app, what ads actually pop up that a child should never watch, and there's no way to tell them not to play them. It's disgusting. And then the other side of this whole conversation that I'm saying, the other day I was trying to figure out how to turn off an ad. I was playing um, Tetris. I love playing Tetris on my phone. Um, I'm number two in Great Falls. That doesn't matter. There's probably barely anyone who plays here anyway. So my point being, I was playing my Tetris game and this very unfortunate ad popped up of, um, one of these games where you go through these gates and you multiply your characters and then you can go through another gate and you can lose them all by accident, but you're supposed to like... You're probably knowing what I'm talking about, but the problem is that I really hate it about it is that they are using very scantily dressed girls that are animated and they're twerking. And if you go through these gates, the girl's butt gets bigger, which sounds hilarious and it is hilarious. But at the same time, I don't want that content going into my head and I want to choose to say, Listen, I get that this is an ad, but I don't deserve to have to put up with this ad. I want to reject ever seeing this ad again, and there's no way to do it. But here's the crazy part that really frustrated me. I found there were ads out there that sound like they were American-made, like that sound that they were made here in the U.S., and you can go in and see where it comes from. Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Hong Kong, uh, overseas, overseas. We are being so incredibly manipulated, and I know you know already know this. We're being so incredibly manipulated by other countries in our country where we're assuming something is, you know, when they're talking about insurance policies and whatever else these ads are covering, and then you go and see who's actually purchasing the ad. 
It's countries overseas. So when people are saying that we're being indoctrinated by people overseas, they're right. Not only in our political side of things, but also in our entertainment. And I know you already know that, but it's made very clear. And the algorithm doesn't care about that sort of stuff. And so when they see a video getting blasted by all of these, you know, hardcore religious fanatics for a certain band, they go, oh, we need to share that out further. And then suddenly other people are like, well, how do I make content like that? And they don't see it as an opportunity to teach. They see it as an opportunity to get rich quick. And they abuse it. And that's stupid. And that is my argument that I put before the judge. And I say, judge, reactions can be good, but they're being poorly used, manipulated, and it is changing the game in a terrible way for what we can do in the future. I also would argue, for now, I believe that reactions are a fad for a little bit longer. I think we'll see it for a bit longer, but I believe that reactions are a fad. Now, if you're going, well, Tim, every you can get away with all of that because if you go into the YouTube settings, scroll all the way down to the bottom of your YouTube videos when you upload them, you can see that the videos are able to be shared because you approved it that other people could take and remix your video. Yes, that's very true. Uh, and you can turn that function off. I don't know how that affects um, the algorithm, but and the reality is, yes, that is a default setting that is set automatically. And YouTube wants it that way because they quickly can pull in ads and use that to make a ton of money because that's defaulted as the way to go. I don't know how that affects the algorithm if you don't have that turned on, but there is a way to turn it off. Um, I haven't seen the results of that, if it blocks other people from pulling it, but trust me, I know every back door of how to download someone else's video into my computer without having access. I know how to do it. And if you're a streamer or a content creator, you probably do too. So even though you're supposedly able to block people from doing it, they're still going to do it. I mean, the world of, you know, pirating in general, pirating online through peer-to-peer -peer networks, through um, torrents and through everything else. And remember LimeWire back in the day? It's, it, it's easy to theft this stuff. Easy to do it. And deeply unfortunate that once again, good things have been so perverted and destroyed and messed up. And I am so thankful I do not have children in this day and age. Because if my kid had a phone and sees half the ads that I see... If my 10-year-old is playing Tetris, which is perfectly safe, and they can enjoy doing something that's not going to pervert their mind, and then an ad pops up of so many things that there, there's, the, there's an app that literally says, do you want really sexy videos? Check out this ad. You know, check out this app. If that's playing on my kid's phone and I can't tell the services to block that. And by the time my kid has seen it and I caught them seeing it, you're not going to let them, you, you, you can't get that out of their head. There's no protection for our kids, you know? And so, and in this day and age, I, I miss when we were younger and for you to have a cell phone at 18 was a miracle because when it was time to come home, your dad would whistle for you on the other side of the neighborhood and you'd hear him calling. When the lights turned out, it was time to go, you know. Nowadays, kids have cell phones because their parents are scared to not be able to get in touch with them. But those kids can then just as easily, whether you have parental access or not or whatever, can still go and get these apps that have ads, see these ads that should not be seen by children, And that's why I talk about how perverted our world is as a Christian, uh, as someone who cares about good morals, as someone who wants to make good decisions for myself and for my family, 
even though I don't have kids. Or I want to create content that parents can count on where their kid could watch this video and they know that they're probably pretty safe for the most part on my YouTube. But that is such a rarity these days because we're losing, as we continue into the future, we're losing the parent-child connection that helps them realize when something is good or not good. And it's just such a shame. It's such a shame. Our world continues to fall apart, and I blame it on bad parenting. I blame it on bad parenting. So we get the crumbling and the cheapening of everything that surrounds us. Everything just gets cheap. And that is truly saddening, truly terrible to watch. And we have a future ahead of us that looks bright. The world of AI looks awesome. There's so much technology coming up that's going to be so much fun for n nerds like me and like you. And yet it everything's cheapening. The content is cheapening. And that everything is cheapening. And if you want to play a game or watch a YouTube video or whatever, you will be surrounded by this cheapened content that you will have to watch to even watch the rest of the content that isn't cheap. I find that ridiculous and shameful and disgraceful, but it doesn't surprise me because our world is all about getting rich fast, success, breaking the rules, bending the rules, making things work for you. And if they can find a loophole... Someone's going to do it, and someone's going to screw with it. And then we sit here, and we watch it happen around us. And there's nothing we can do about it. Well, there might be, but this is more of an argument without an answer on this podcast versus what... <laughs> if I was to offer a fix for the world, I would say, find, find Jesus, find Jesus Christ... Change your life, change your walk. I mean, it's it's like all of these spammers who call us all day long. It's ridiculous. These people are purposefully trying to steal your money, trying to steal your parents' money, trying to steal your grandparents' money. They're evil. There are so many evil people out there in the world because we have a lack of respect, a lack of faith, a lack of good morals, and a lack of an understanding that there is an, a, a, a God that will punish for sin, will punish for you being a doofus, and the end result is not good. And we should be fixing these things. We should be connecting families together again. We should not have children who can't feed themselves, and so they take food home from schools to feed their families over the weekend. I've seen that in schools in my community. It's disgusting disgusting. It is the cheapening of everything that surrounds us. Cheapening of everything that surrounds us. And that is exactly what Satan wants. Exactly what Satan wants. <sighs> All right. I'm obviously going way off kilter here, but the thing is I'm, I'm a Christian, so a lot of things connect back to good morals and lead back to Christ, honestly. It really does. Um, in saying that, let me make mention of one thing here. I just released a song. Now, I'm not overly proud of it because I don't like my voice or whatever, and, and I rapped, believe it or not. The whole thing is me rapping, if you will. But I released a song on Spotify, and if you want to test your faith, then I challenge you to look up Demons. Okay, it's Demons by Tim Lee. If you look it up on Spotify, it should pop up. Uh, Demons by Tim Lee. Give that song a listen and hang on for dear life. I will get canceled if that song gets out there in the world. It does not. It, it is nothing you've ever heard. And I challenge you to give it a listen. And if you feel uncomfortable, there may be more reasons why you're feeling uncomfortable than you may know. It may be, may be honestly, because you're under attack 
from a spiritual influence versus just because the song is cringe, which is totally possible because I find it cringy. But at the same time, as I listen to it, I'm affected by it as I listen to it. So give demons a listen, see how it affects you. And uh, if you liked this conversation, make sure to hit that like button. If there is a like button, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, greatly appreciate if you leave a comment. Um, And I look forward to many more conversations like this here on the Legacy Cast. We're trying to make a legacy. We're trying to make change. We're trying to make a difference. And we're trying to capture other people's legacies as well. Before time runs out. Because time is running out. Time is running out. Legacies are disappearing by the day. Good morals, good people disappearing by the day. And we'll never get those stories unless we go and find them, pull them into a situation like this, and have those conversations. Have conversations like this. Now as you move forward, hang on tight because you're going to see ads you're going to absolutely hate. You're going to see content and you're going to be like, yep, that's what Tim was talking about. And it's going to make you angry. It should. It's all stupid. So keep it crispy, my friends. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching the Legacy Cast, and I will see you next time or hear you next time. And thank you so much for listening to my stupid rants. I hope they're interesting for you, though, and I hope it gives you a little bit of an insight of why trying to shoot for success the easy way just ends in discomfort, just ends in you going, I'm not good enough because you're just trying to steal someone else's content. There's good ways to go about doing that stuff. Find purpose in your reactions. Make content that reacts properly to those things. And there are so many amazing channels reacting to movies, giving the background on why movies are so good, why actors are so good, why directors are so good. Giving a reaction with an, uh, an educational purpose. I love content like that. And then there's everybody else. And there's far more everybody else than there are good reactors. So... All right. God bless. We'll see you next time. Bye. I want to let you know that Legacy Studio is a network of YouTube channels that I've created over the years with over 1,500 videos of all kinds. And if you're enjoying this content, I would love to invite 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 you invite you to join me on some of the other content I've made on a few of my other channels. That it would be perfect for you. Now, Legacy Studio is a Christian-owned and operated YouTube network and i've been making content here since 2010 so this is family friendly content for most ages um oh no i'm stuck i'm so 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 stuck i am 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 so come here come here come here come here come here come here don't come here and is striving to be a testimony in a climate full of entertainment that goes without moral thought. We try to keep it clean here, but we aren't politically correct. So please, support the cause by checking out a few of the other channels here, and maybe getting subscribed. Links will be in the description below.